Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and today we're going to continue our deep dive into the time warp. Last week we tackled working with a speed graph, so next up is working with a position graph. So we're back at square one and I've already opened the position graph view. Make sure you have you edit the position graph as well. Now the position graph is not as intuitive to understand, I think anyway, but it's very, very powerful. So let's check this out. And uh, the right click menu, it has exactly the same um, options. So all the things that we learned at speed graph apply to the position graph as well. Down here we have the position of the resulting clip in the timeline that is the x-axis and the y-axis is the corresponding position in the source material and as we have a hundred percent you know speed at one second to the resulting clip we are also at one second in the source clip and two seconds as well so how do you use that thing so let's just say we need to have the movement in the beginning up until he looks into the camera to be exactly 20 frames. So let's add a keyframe at the point that we can see him on camera and at the point that he's moving out of it. Go to the end, go 20 frames to the left, say, align keyframe, mark the second keyframe. Go to the beginning, 20 frames to the right. Again, say align keyframe. And there it is. It exactly fits that. And you know, doing this with speed graph would have been an absolute pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> to make it a little more easy to understand, you remember I told you about the presets here. The ones I use are Trim to Fill, which is a very, very nice preset. What it does is you apply it to a little clip and now you can trim it. And it will dynamically adjust uh, the speed of the clip so that it fills its new length. Another one that is handy is of course Reverse Motion. What it does, it, it reverses the motion. Now you wouldn't have thought that, would you? But I told you those were only presets. So let's just rebuild those presets with a normal time warp. First of all, let's build reverse motion. It's pretty easy to do. Now you might think, oh, it's easy. I just go to the first keyframe and say minus 100% instead of 100%, right? Well, that doesn't work very well because it actually reverses the motion to the left of the source footage. So to the stuff that happened prior to the keyframe. What we want to do is have the motion work from here to there. So let's undo this. And I guess you have already found the answer and it is, of course, the good old anchor point. <laughs> so what we have to do is simply go to the last frame, say align keyframe, because that is the only keyframe, it is also the keyframe that the anchor point is set to, so it has automatically slipped the anchor point to this frame as well. And now you simply go minus 100%, and there you have your reverse motion preset built all by yourself. That is pretty easy, isn't it? So, you know, once you get the hang of the time warp, you can build pretty much everything by yourself. So now let's build the trim to fill thingy. Let's start with uh, time warp again, the way it is. Ah, now the great thing is that we have to use the position window now. Now, what are we supposed to do here? Hmm. Actually, it's so dead simple, you wouldn't believe it. By default, the keyframes 
in the time warp are fixed. That means if you trim the thing, they stay at the same place. Now the, the clip is longer, but the keyframes are still at the same place. So all you have to do now is change them to elastic keyframes. So look at the position tick markers here. They are now evenly spaced on both axes. Axes, I guess. Um, and now let's trim the clip. And let's trim it quite a lot. <laughs> And now you can see the tick marks of the timeline are very, very narrowly spaced. So that kind of means that there's a lot more time down here than on the y-axis. And as you can see, when I play, yes, it is very, very slow. So that is the way you build your trim to fill. Pretty simple, huh? So once you get the hang of it, it's really, really that simple. Okay, last thing today covering the basics is settings. Go to settings and to the render settings. And there you can set the default render types for time warps or motion effects. Now, motion effects only go up to VTR style and interpolated field, so you should choose one of them too as your default. You can always change it later on. And at the time warps, you can also change it to one of the better types of rendering. That has the big, big advantage that you will never ever use duplicated field just because you forgot to set a render setting. So um, I would strongly recommend you change the render settings. And while you're at it, also go here for image interpolation and go to advanced and change the render completion sound if you like. Ah, for example, <laughs> or yo. I think both would be very, very nice, but I keep it in none. <laughs> All right. So that's the basics of the time warp. And uh, thank you for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast. If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at avidscreencast.com or on the iTunes store. If you have any comments or suggestions, uh, drop me a line at mail at avidscreencast.com or just comment on the website. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash screencast, and on Facebook, on facebook.com slash screencast. If you'd like to see what kinds of things I do professionally, check out editguy.de. Again, thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.